welcome to a new video and this is episode 8 of Practicing Portraits where I practice something new related to portraits and share my tips from a beginner to beginners. So in this video you will know that I will be focusing on eyes. This is part 1. In my next eyes video I will be drawing eyes as pairs. Let's get into the video. So the time lapse won't be in sync with me explaining it, so it will appear to be quite fast, but as I walk you through the steps and you see me drawing, repeating the same steps, it hopefully won't seem so daunting. So the first thing that I do is the outline. I mark out the width of the eyes and I make a small pencil mark to remind me. Then with the outline of the eyes, you need to carefully look at your reference photo. I suggest you start at one side of the eye first. So you'll see that I always start with the left side of the eye. Then I gradually mark out the top and bottom of the eye together, observing how steep they curve and how far apart they gradually get from each other. Generally speaking, the top of the eye tends to curve more steeply from the tear duct of the eye compared to the bottom of the eye. Also, with some eyes, the tear duct appears to be protruding outwards from the general almond shape of the eye, and sometimes it will be more curved or pointed. But every eye is different, so carefully follow your reference to guide you. Right, so now I outline the iris, which is the coloured ring around the black circle, which is your pupil. So, starting with the outline of the iris. Since I've chosen a straight-on view of the eyes, the iris is at the centre of the eye. And try to make it as round as you can according to your reference. If it is a dead-on view and the eye is looking directly at you, this will more closely resemble a perfect circle at the centre of the eye width-wise, like this. However, it could be further up or down like this. This is actually quite challenging as any slight difference in the pupil and iris will make it look like the eye is looking to the side, but that is the whole part of practicing. Don't worry too much if your eye is not looking straight at you as we are practicing the basics first and accuracy will come with practice. So, then the next step is that I outline my highlight. So with each eye that I do, you hopefully notice there is small white shapes that is the highlight that I'm referencing to, where light is reflecting off the shiny surface of the eye. Again, it is different with every reference, but you can use the outline of your iris to help you map out how big the highlight should be and where it should go. Once you've got the highlight outlined, outline your pupil. Again, this should be a circular shape. And if your reference is anything like mine, the pupil will be touching the highlight. So now that you have the pupil and the highlight done, you can shade in your pupil, except the part that is the highlight. And since the pupil is black, you want to shade in the pupil very dark, and this will contrast with your highlight, and it will make it pop. Right, we are going to move on to detail and shadows. Normally, the outline of the iris is quite dark, so I go over it to make it thicker and darker. So let's focus on the shadows and detail of the iris first. I start out by shading in the darkest shadows of the iris. So looking at your reference photo, where is the light source coming from? If it's the top left, for example, the shadows will be at the top and right of the eye. For all the eyes in this video, the shadow is always at the top of the iris, and this is probably because of the shadow casted from the eyelid. Once you have gently shaded in your darkest shadows, I make these I make these lines coming outwards from the center of the pupil. 
If it is a clearer picture, you are more likely to see these lines going around the iris, and you can gently sketch in these lines according to your reference photo. So if you want to make your drawing perhaps look more detailed, you can add these lines gently around the iris, even if you don't see them in your reference photo. These lines should be very thin and well defined. Now looking at your reference, certain lines will appear darker, so I do make these lines darker. Then I add my middle and lightest shadows. So you want to slowly build up the shadows, bearing in mind where it is the, the darkest, the lightest, and then your midtones between them. When adding my shadows, I make sure that it is in the same line motion as the lines that we have drawn that are coming from the center of the pupil. And that is the iris done. So with the hard part out the way, we can shade in the eyeball, do the eyelashes and draw out our crease. So when shading in the eyeball, because it is a sphere shape, the center of the eyeball will be furthest out from the edge of the eyeball curving inwards. So you have to shade in your shadows to define this curved shape. The shadows on the edges of your eye will be the darkest and then gradually get lighter as it reaches the iris. The tear duct will often have a line separating it from the eyeball and it will be darker than the eyeball. For the eyelashes, you want these to be thin, swift, curving strokes. The eyelashes on the left side of the pupil, the lashes will be curving to the left. Then for the lashes right of the pupil, it will be curving to the right. This is the same for both right and left eyes. The only difference that I notice as a beginner is that if it is the left eye, for example, the lashes on the left of the eye will be longer and vice versa for the right eye. The top lashes generally tend to be longer than the bottom ones and the top eyelashes are thicker with more lashes than the bottom and they also tend to be more curved as well. Several of my eyes had eyeliners so I made the outline of the eye more defined. And with the top of the eye with a thicker line that gets thicker as it gets to the out, outside edge of the eye. So not the edge where the tear duct is. And then it meets at a point along with the last eyelash. Nothing too fancy. And then with the last thing is the crease. So this is the line that is above the eyelid. If your eye is a monolid then you won't have a crease line. If it's a double eyelid, then you can follow your reference to mark out where it is. Again, you can use the outline of the iris and the eyeball to help you observe how much it is curving when it reaches certain points above the eye. And that is all my basic tips done. Feel free to go back to the start of the video to see how I have repeated these steps with each eye as these tips will make a lot more sense. Breaking down each different part of portraits, in this case an eye, really helped me to slowly improve. I will say that looking back at all nine eyes that I practiced, the first three eyes in the right column were probably the most accurate and had the best contrast and were probably some of the best eyes out of the nine. I think this is because I was really taking my time and overthinking to try and get it right. The next three eyes, which I didn't show the time lapse of, were in my opinion the worst ones. These were the ones furthest on the left. I honestly think I got a bit tired and rushed them because I spent quite a while to do the ones on the right. And you'll notice that I did the last three eyes, which are in the center column, on a different day based on the lighting and my nails. The second day that I did them, I had more energy and you can maybe see that I'm a lot more confident and I put more detail in the iris with more fine lines and different tones whilst doing it in the same time that it took me to do the first three eyes. I will say that accuracy of the shape of the iris and pupils 
is still something I need to work on as well as lashes. I still find them quite awkward to draw. Maybe I'll figure it out for part two. Anyways, that is all from me. I hope that this video helps you to learn something and was nice to be able to practice drawing with me. If you are new to portraits like me and want to practice other things like eyes, heads, noses and so forth, then don't forget to subscribe for weekly beginner videos and you can check out my other videos in this series in my practicing portrait playlist. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.